What is good, everybody? You're tuned into a special edition of what we typically would call the Players' Lounge on, uh, on Inside Carolina, brought to you by Heels for Life. We're going to call this the Study Lounge because what I've got tonight are, uh, are four very well-rounded but also excellent students uh, and academics on the UNC football team. These guys aren't the smartest guys on the team necessarily, but they are four gentlemen who have absolutely nailed the concept of balancing a student and an athlete into their existence at UNC. And, and we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight because uh, it's important for people to, to meet these guys. As you guys have heard from all the other uh, player uh, players lounge breakdowns that we've done with Heels for Life, um, you've recognized some of these guys on the screen. I've talked to a couple of them before, but tonight we're going to talk about some things a little bit differently and just help to uncover the academic side and the smart side. And naturally, since I'm the most brilliant guy on Inside Carolina staff, I'm the one that's going to host this because who else is is able to, to talk academics and talk the book side than, than yours truly? I'm Joey Powell. We're brought to you by Heels for Life. Uh, and I'm going to start by going around as I see them on my screen. Um, if you are listening to this, just bear with me. But if you're watching this, I'm going to start with the guy that's in the middle, Russell Tabor. Russell, uh, state your name number and class that you are in right now uh or what year you're in at unc um russell tabor um i am quarterback from charlotte north carolina and i'm number 16 i'm a junior redshirt sophomore all right next uh who joined just after russell uh mr green what's up guys i'm elijah green number 21 i'm a senior running back and uh i'm actually graduating this december as well Whew, man's got things to do and places to be. Uh, next, our, our our new man on campus, uh, Lamp. Uh, Willie Lampkin, number 53. Um, I'm a junior in the classroom, senior on the field. All right, and uh, Mr. Cowan? All right, Jacoby Cowan, number 93, born and raised Charlotte, North Carolina. I play defensive end, and I'm a junior on the field. I love that these guys are at different places in their careers for on the field and and an academic. So the first thing I want to do, and I'm going to try to spread these questions around a little bit so that uh, so that our listeners and viewers can hear from each one of you guys. Um, at any point in time, if you want to kind of chime in on your own, feel free. You guys have a lot better rapport with each other than you do with me. So I, if, if y'all take this away from me, it's okay. Um, I think first things first, and I'm going to go to you first, Russell, because you were the first guy on when we got started. Let me know what a typical day of practice, school, and then like the rest of stuff that are on your plate as, as a, a football player and a student athlete. Let me know what that feels like. You know, t start us off from when you wake up and, and when you might get a break. And, you know, do you get to go to the bathroom? Do you get to eat food? Like all of that stuff. Tell us kind of what that looks like from start to stop. Absolutely. Um, so we all wake up probably about 545 in the morning. We got team meeting at 630. Um, got to eat breakfast before. Um, and then we're meeting till typically about eight practice till about 10 and then kind of going straight from there, getting a shower, um, going straight to class. So I got class like on Wednesday, class at 11 to 12, 15 um, at, over at the business school and then come back, uh, get some lunch. We got lift with Coach Hess at two, two to three, and then shower up again, go right back for a 3.30 to 4.45 class. And, um, and then we got QB meeting at 5.15. So it's 6.30 all of a sudden and, um, it's been a pretty full day. And then, you know, if we got, if I got homework, got to do that. Um, and then, you know, try to find maybe an hour or two to um, kind of hang out and relax and then back to bed and sort of the same thing the next day. What time do you get to bed at night, Russell? Uh, if the coaches are listening, about 1030, but it's not. It doesn't always <laughs> <take that long. laughs> uh, any of you guys want to chime in on that? Is that pretty similar for the rest of you guys? I mean, uh, you know, if anybody's got anything different, shout it out, please. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty similar. Uh, like you said, um, pretty much, as you can see, um, my schedule is pretty much full the entire day. Um, one thing he might have left out is you also have tutoring in the evenings as well sometimes. So um, that can also be a thing. And for somebody like myself who is involved in a, a fraternity on campus, I have events and things of that nature that I have to attend um, with my fraternity as well. So, yeah, and it's pretty, that's much, pretty much jam-packed. Kappa Alpha Psi, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. So you got you got one of the, the red and white uh, candy canes hanging up in your locker? 
<laughs> yeah, wow. something like it, man. Something like it. My brother-in-law would appreciate that. He's a uh, he's Kappa Alpha Psi member. Um, Elijah, I'm going to come to you next. What's it like going from class uh, or, or going from meetings to class or class to meetings? Like when when Russell mentioned, you know, lifting. I'm thinking, God, if I'm going from something like uh, something like you know macroeconomics to Brian Hess yelling at me to squat harder, like wh- what's that transition like, and how does how does your day change between you know one or two of those things? Yeah, I feel like it's a it's a pretty tough transition at times because I think Russ can attest for this because the business school isn't the closest to our football facilities. So it's a lot of like we finish basically practice, we get in, we shower, and then it's about like 20 minutes later, we're already sweating completely because we had a rush, try to eat a little bit of food and then try to drive, park, and then have to walk probably like probably like a 10 minute walk all the way to the business school. And it's completely uphill. There's like a set of stairs that feel like it's like you're running stadiums. And by the time you get in class, I'm usually drenched. I'm sweating. It looks like I just got out of practice. I probably smell bad again. And then I got to kind of lock in and get ready to take notes and everything. And right after that class is over, sometimes it kind of depends on the class schedule, but you can have as less as 30 minutes, 15 minutes from after class to kind of rush over and get changed up to get ready for a lift or kind of get changed up and then go right into a position meeting. So it's a lot of back to back a lot of the times and it's a lot of not a lot of rest time, not a lot of time to really chill and take a breath. It's kind of rapid fire, rapidly going. So when we say that our schedule is completely filled to every single second of the day, it's it's not an exaggeration. It's like every single second is accounted for. We're either traveling somewhere, we're taking a break to eat or get a snack or catch our breath, but then we got to go right back to a meeting, right back to a workout. And then you got to get your mindset ready from learning something in your business class, learning something about communications from marketing. And then I have to completely switch to be able to push twice my body weight in the weight room and, you know, keep up with all the other guys and uh, keep that energy going throughout the day for those meetings and for your lifts. It can be really, really tiring. And a lot of the guys I know feel the exact same way. I think one of the reasons we wanted to do this show was because, you know, what you said, Elijah, a lot of people hear it, but I don't think people really understand or can contextualize, you know, like Russell said, 545 until 1030 or 545 until, you know, a little bit later. I mean, that's, and, and that's not like 545 to eight. And then I got two hours of downtime. No, it's, it's, it's go, go, go from, from the jump as soon as you guys you know hit the floor in the morning willie i want to ask you a question since you're new to campus um coming from coastal carolina i want to ask you can you explain to us what carolina provides the students with you know the student side of student athlete you get uh you get study hall you know jacoby mentioned tutoring earlier you've got different academic advising uh explain to to our listeners and viewers what that's like what kind of support you get as a student athlete uh, we get a lot of support, you know, um, we have great advisors, we have uh, tutor se- tutoring sessions, um, you know, study hall, and we have people that, you know, want to see us succeed. So, you know, they're doing everything that they can to, you know, help us reach that next level. Um, and I feel like uh, the tutoring definitely helps. And uh, my advisor, you know, having a great advisor like Kat, um, Kathleen, Les, you know, they're, they're very helpful in the process. I think people will hear academic advisor, they hear tutor, and they may have their own conceptions about you know, what that looks like, what those folks do for you. Help us understand, you know, how valuable it is to have someone that can kind of serve as an extension of, of your professor or your teacher um, when you've got that one-on-one time and you've got to, to shut everything else out and, and, and buckle down. Help people understand what those people actually are able to do and how important they are in, in you having the the academic success you've had? Um, you know, I'll say when it comes to tutoring, you know, one-on-one tutoring, uh, for example, I'm in Spanish, you know, and I've, I've struggled with Spanish uh, for quite a while. And, you know, just doing that tutoring, one-on-one tutoring, or, you know, group tutoring with uh, other student athletes, it helps me to, you know, get a better understanding of what they're going through. And, um, you know, it is, it is like, a, it's like, it's just a very helpful process. So it's like, um, and then when it comes to advisors, they help you with uh, your, your schedule, you know, putting in the right classes and uh, stuff like that. 
Yeah, I mean, I would imagine if, if with the, the workload and the, the burdens that are placed on you guys, you know, you can't go to practice at 4 o'clock because practice ain't at 4 o'clock. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's you've got to be at practice and you also have to be in whatever class you're you're lined up for for your academic goals. And, and, and I think that matters. And just having somebody that's on the administrative side that can help you kind of thread that together is, is really important. Jacoby, yes. I want to ask you a weird question. Uh, what does what does Coach Brown say to you guys about your academics? Again, you guys are high performers in the classroom. Uh, does Coach Brown ever say anything to you about, you know, about your grades or your GPA or, or how you're looking uh, with any of your homework assignments? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure all the fellas can attest to this on the call, but uh, he pretty much, if it's not every day, it's every other day. Like, he's always talking about academics and handling your business on and off the field, um, whether that be in a community, um, whether that be with your schoolwork. But he always says that, you know, football won't last forever, and we always um, should have a, a go-to plan outside of football. And in order to do that, you must get your education, and you must um, – graduate from the University of North Carolina. So he always emphasizes that. And uh, I think that's a, a big thing, a big reason why um, not just the ones on this call, but pretty much all of our other teammates are, are, are really um, focused on, you know, graduating and handling our business so that on years on down the road, he always talks about 40 years later, um, where will you be in life? So I think that goes a long way um, in, in terms of who he is as a coach and not just because you have um, a lot of different um, coaches at certain places where, you know, academics might mean something, but or it might not at the end of the day. Um, but coming from someone like him who's been doing this for so long, um, and he still cares about not only us as players, but us as people as well and uh, our lives after football. So I think it, it, it goes a long way to show what type of program we're in here in North Carolina. I appreciate that answer. I think a lot of people who have listened to Coach Brown have heard him say what you just said. You know, it's a 40-year commitment, not a four-year one, or it's a 40-year decision, not a four-year one. Uh, I'm assuming everybody, all four of you guys have heard that before, but um, it, I want each of you to give an example of how, how he might have actually uh, worked that into action or how he might have kind of sprung that on you one time and you, you know, you're sitting a little bit later or maybe a few months or years down the road, you're like, damn, he was right. Like, when, when has anybody had that moment yet where you just feel like, oh, it really is a 40-year commitment and Carolina really is supporting us for 40 years instead of just, just the time we're playing ball here? Any of you shout it out? I, yeah. I would say just uh, – from seeing the people that come back to school that might have played for Coach Brown, even at Texas or at UNC in the past, they come back and he's always open arms and supporting whatever they have, business endeavors, whatever they need, he's always there to provide it. He always talks about he stays in contact with a lot of his former players. And, you know, if they reach out and, you know, need a recommendation or, you know, they need some advice or they need um, something for a job, he's always open arms and willing to give that. And, I think it kind of just speaks to the kind of person that Coach Brown is, but also that this 40-year decision thing isn't just a thing that we say. It's what they actually practice and what our whole community and university truly believes is that once you graduate from here, the relationships and the bonds that you created with your teammates and with the coaches, it's going to last you forever. And I know 100% down the road, if I need anything, Coach Brown is going to do his best to provide it for me. If I need anything for any, any of these guys in this in this uh, in this call or on the team, they're going to be able to provide it for me because that's what it truly means to be you know a Carolina student athlete, and that's the kind of commitment that this university gives back to the student athletes here. Jacoby, you wanted to chime in on that too. Yeah, so it's funny that uh, Elijah ended up saying that because I was going to uh, bring up the fact that how we have so many former players of Coach Brown's that. Um, are currently on the staff. Um, you have guys like Corey Holiday, um, who handles a lot of our personnel type of things um, on the team. You have Coach Tommy Thigpen, who was a, a phenomenal player um, for him as well. So you just have certain so many um, individuals, great-minded individuals that you know come back and, and want to work for Coach Brown. And you know, years on down the road, after their playing careers are over, they know they have um, a, a place to come back to and someone that'll look out for him, like Elijah said. So um, it just goes to show, like I said, the type of man Coach Brown is and, and just the, the culture that we have here at Carolina that's, that's welcoming and you're always welcome back, um, no matter who you are and, and what plays you made. You know, that, that's really what it is. Yeah, and I also think that, um, you know, Coach Brown finds a way to sort of connect what he's talking about uh, in a football lens, you know, across um, everything. So kind of what Jacoby was talking about earlier it applies to, uh, the way you do anything, whether it's academics, in the community, uh, in business. And 
I've always kind of respected. I feel like he's got a bit of a sort of a CEO mind because that's really what a head coach is. You're the CEO of the football program. So um, just kind of the way he talks to us, just find, a way, find ways to create our edge. I think a lot of the stuff he says we can apply to sort of our life after football. And if you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to Inside Carolina. We're having a little bit of a uh, a heels for life instead of players lounge study lounge because we're talking with some of the uh, some of the many academic um, yeah, high performers that are on the UNC football team right now. We're just kind of looking at things maybe out of a little different lens than, than what you would typically see these gentlemen as. Uh, guys, I'm going to take football at the table for a second, and I'm going to go around the same way I did when we started and ask you each, what do you want to do after school, Russell? Um. I'm thinking kind of right after school when all these guys are killing it in the NFL, I'm, I'm probably going to um, try to get into banking, um, sort of gain some of those skills, and then hopefully one day uh, maybe start a business of my own and um, kind of hopefully work work in a team, um, sort of maintain that, that team feel I, I have now. Ah, noted. What about you, Elijah? Uh, I would say a lot of the kind of same aspirations. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and be able to start my own business and kind of lead a team, have that same kind of team feel that we kind of have here at Carolina. So that's always been something to me. And also being able to start my own foundation. It's also been a big part of something I want to do to be able to give back to the community. I'm really, uh, really, really like interested in, you know, student athlete mental health and mental health of like the youth. So being able to find a way that I can, you know, leverage what I know and the things that I've been through to be able to give back and help people going through mental health struggles is something that's really important to me. Now, I know that you, uh, when we talked to you uh, earlier this year on the the Players' Lounge, you shared a little bit of that, and I'm, I'm getting chills because you're talking about wanting to start a, a private foundation. I love that. Um, Willie, what do, you th- what do you think you want to do after you take the pads off the last time? I want to be a coach. <laughs> Football, be- any, any specific level? Uh, I want to uh, try out uh, college. One of my friends, one of my close friends, he's, uh, he's coaching right now. I want to uh, be his GA. Love he's it. He's Liberty University. All right. Love it. Love it. What about you, Jacoby? Um, for me, you know, being involved in sports my entire life um, since the age of five, um, whether that's been soccer, started at soccer um, and then went on to basketball and football. But uh, I've always been involved in sports and uh, it's a passion of mine, just not only to help others out, but just to, you know, see uh, people compete. Um, competition is a big thing to me. So um, with me, I mean, my uh major is sports administration so i definitely want to be involved in the business side of things um involved in sports but if not then that's totally fine as well but um like i said i'm big on uh business and then sports as well so definitely something in that within that world somebody sounds like he wants to be a front office guy uh for yeah. for a sports franchise i can i can i can hear what you're putting down um so uh, one of the questions that we ask on the on the players lounge we're talking about you know we've asked a couple of you guys before like what was your first welcome to college moment? I'm going to ask you a little twist on that. I want to find out when was the first time you realized, oh, my God, being a top-level athlete and being a top-level student is going to take a lot of work. When did that hit you, and what was that example? Jacoby, I'll stay with you and let you go first. Yeah, so for me, um, of course, I spent my first uh, few years at Ohio State um, on a college level. So um, that was already a big difference in itself, being you know six-plus hours away from home. Um, originally, like I said, I'm born and raised in Charlotte. So being so far from home and kind of just uh, learning how to, you know, manage the, and balance things out um, in terms of your football and then also your academics. So it was definitely a, a, a big transition. But one thing that I will say helped me out, um, and I'm sure Russ can attest to this as well, because uh, we kind of come from the same type of college preparatory schools in, uh, in, in Charlotte, where I attended Providence Day and he attended Country Day. Um, and those are two both um, very prestigious academic schools. Um, and so I, I will say that kind of attending Providence Day not only um, helped me out with balancing my work and uh, with the, the rigor as well. Um, so I think definitely, like I said, attending somewhere like that, it definitely helped me kind of transition to college and, and made it, the transition so much more smooth than, than a lot of my other peers. Yeah. What about you, Willie? When did you, uh, so, when did, what was that moment where you were just like, man, this is this is a little extra? Uh, I say like um like from for me, I went to school at a coast Carolina, and when I got to college, we were uh, you know it was during COVID, so it was a little different. But I'll say my really first welcome to college moment was uh 
you know, having to put down the Zoom and, you know, actually go to class, it was a lot different, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's my welcome, welcome to a college moment because it's like, oh, this is actual, you know, actual school. I just can't get on my phone and log on to Zoom and, you know, lay in bed. I have to actually go to class and, you know, engage, <laughs> you know, talk. Got to go out and touch grass. Eliza, what about yeah. you, man? What was, the, what was the first moment that you felt like uh, you felt like things are, are heavier trying to be a student and a student athlete versus maybe just one or the other? Yeah, kind of going off of what Willie said, kind of that transition out of COVID into real class. So like in-person classes, it was uh, sophomore year. I was taking a calculus class and an economics class, Econ 410. It's probably been one of the hardest classes I've ever been through here at Carolina. I'm in these two classes at the same time. And I remember it was one night I had a midterm in both of the classes on the same day. That night before I was in a study group, I went on campus. I was in a study group from like six to eight for calculus and then from like eight to 10 for econ. And I remember I was like going back and I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> like I was stressed out, I was tired. I remember I called like my parents back home. I was like, this is hard. I was like, this is hard. This is tough. Like, and I got practice tomorrow too. And I got to take two midterms and I was like, wow, this is, this is something. All right. But I ended up actually doing pretty well in both the classes. So uh, thankful for that. But I think it was that moment. I was like, yeah, this is, this is not going to be a breeze. I'm going to really have to work really hard. Like uh, I'll be real. My head hurts thinking about calculus, <laughs> econ 410. And then, yeah, you, know, you got to go. Oh, by the way, I got I got to go protect my quarterback from getting hit by a 290 pound defensive lineman. Sure, this is a great 24 hours for me. Uh, Russell, what about you, man? What's what's the first moment? I mean, again, everybody knows about the Keenan Flagler Business School. Like, what what was the first moment you're like, wow, am I really sure I want to do both of these things? Um, I think probably early on, just those uh, those QB meetings at night with Coach Longo. Um, he he loved to meet with us, and so it was. I kind of remember first week of school, um, sort of planning in my head, like at night, I'm going to get this done and this done. And then, you know, I find myself it's 930 and I'm still sitting in the meeting room. <laughs> and I'm like, well, looks like that's not getting done. So um, <laughs> just kind of had to, uh, you know, figure out how to sort of optimize the day and uh, figure out how to, how to get everything done in sort of tight windows. So I love that uh, I love that Elijah name dropped a couple of his classes. So I'm going to kind of go with that flow with the rest of you. Willie, what's your favorite class right now? Uh, probably my exercise and sports science class. Which which one? Is there a specific one that you like the most? It's like a intro intro class. Uh, so I was trying to I was doing business at my old school. Mm -hmm. And when I got here, I just decided, um, let me try out the sports admin and uh, see see where this goes. And um, I've been liking it so far. It's been a good class. Um, it's, it's, it's very different, you know, from what I was used to. But I'm, I'm definitely liking it and I'm uh, definitely excited to see what the future has big lecture hall or small groups which one do you like better uh definitely small groups it keeps you more engaged yeah. but i don't i don't mind the big lecture groups you know because some some days I, i'd rather just take notes yeah that's that's fair russell uh what's your favorite class you have right now um i'd say business strategy um just kind of enjoy seeing reading cases about how companies are able to sort of create their advantage um Kind of reminds me of some somewhat of sort of the sports dynamic as well. Okay, and would would you prefer, you know, kind of the large, you know, like four hundred style, uh, style style classroom, or you like to have something a little smaller, a little more intimate? Uh, I do like the small classes, but I found that kind of the best lecturers tend to be in those big lecture classes. So, um, you know, like Mr. Kitchen and, and the entrepreneurship class, and um, Matt Andrews and some of those history classes. You know, they, there's there's a big audience, but they make you feel like you're just sitting there at a coffee table, just the two of you. So, I, I've liked both. Chapel Hill legend, Mr. Kitchen, nice nice name drop there. Elijah, favorite class? Uh, right now, I'm in a personal branding class. It's a business Ooh. elective, okay. and that's a really really fun class for me. Just trying to figure out, like you know, figuring out what your brand is, what your why is, and how you can best manage your brand and display your brand on a daily basis. So it's been a really really cool class to be a part of. I'm going to ask you the same follow-up. I ask the guys, large or small class? I like small classes. I like to be able to kind of get to know some of the people in the class and have a closer relationship with the professor. Okay. Uh, and, and something else, I, I love that you mentioned the branding thing. We'll talk about that a little bit later before we get out of here. 
um, and kind of how NIL is helping that a little bit. Jacoby, what's your favorite class you have right now? Um, right now, I'll probably say um, I'm actually in one of my major classes this semester, and it's a, a sports sales class, which is very interesting to see how not only uh, collegiate sports teams, but uh, professional sports teams kind of market themselves and, and the certain things that they do in order to get ticket sales, uh, whether that be promoting through social media, um, making phone calls to, to season ticket holders mm -hmm. uh, to try to secure those spots. So um, it's definitely an interesting class, and um, this, I've learned a lot from it so far. So that's probably my favorite class right now. I'm sure now when you're at Keenan Foot when you're at Keenan Stadium, you see those see those names all up on the wall. It means a little different to you now seeing it, huh? <laughs> Yo, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so one of the things I think that a, a lot of folks would would kind of uh, appreciate, and I'm going to ask you guys to be a little vulnerable with me here, is what's something you feel like you miss out on because you are so immersed and you you, you do have such high aspirations with the academic sides of of being a student here. Uh, Elijah, what's something you feel like you miss sometimes? Uh, I feel like I miss my family, the opportunity to go back home because uh, I'm not like really, really close. It's about a five and a half hour drive back to Georgia. So I don't really get to go home. I probably won't go home again till after the season and uh, after like the regular season. So that's probably the toughest part, like being away from my family and not being able to see them as often. And when I do get the opportunity to see them, it's kind of just after game and a close kind of setting and then back to the regular schedule on Sunday. So I'll say that's kind of the thing I miss out on those opportunities to spend time with family, you know, being Thanksgiving dinners. I, haven't, I can't remember the last time I've uh, spent Thanksgiving with my family or Christmas. So, mm. Jacoby, what about you? What's something you feel like you miss because you're you're such a high performer on the field and in the classroom? I think for me, um, I'll probably say I do miss a lot of um, social events. Um, whether that be through my fraternity or just um, campus life in general. But uh, one thing I will say is that being a student athlete on this level, especially on this level, is a big sacrifice. And um, in order to, you know, get the things and reach the goals that you want to reach, you have to make those sacrifices and putting things off and missing out on things that your friends might be attending. But because you want to get some rest um, for the next day so you can have a good practice, or a good game the next day, you you, you know, you want to get in bed at a good, at least an hour. So I think that's probably the biggest thing I'll say. Um, but like I said, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And, and I chose this this uh, sport for a reason. Um, so, you know, it's a big sacrifice. But I think at the end of the day, um, you're willing to sacrifice for the things that you want in life. So, Well said. Russell, what's something you feel like you might miss out on just because of, of how you, you've stretched yourself for, through academics and, and sports? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd echo what, what both of them say. You know, obviously not being able to see friends and family as much as you'd like to. Um, but definitely what Jacoby's saying, you know, there's so much fun fun things going on at, uh, at UNC, and whether that's, you know, catching other teams' games or um, being involved in clubs. You just don't always um, kind of get those opportunities, um, which um, it just kind of comes with the territory. But like Jacoby said, you know, what, what, wouldn't change it for the world. Willie, anything you want to add? Um, they all they all said the things that I agree upon. Um, like a uh, family, I, I barely get to see my family. You know, I'm from Florida. Um, mm -hmm. The only time I really get to see my fam is really uh, when they come up to the games or if we have like a week break, and that's barely. Um, and I definitely agree with Jacoby said about um, you know we have to sacrifice to get the things that we want in life, and um, and that's that's for, that's real. So I'm gonna give you guys a chance to maybe steal some brownie points here. Uh, if you've got a, a student, or a student, if you've got a teacher or um, maybe an academic advisor, somebody you want to shout out, I know you guys name dropped a little bit earlier, but uh, if you've got a teacher you really want to give some praise to, it could be somebody you've had in the past, maybe somebody you've got this semester or, you know, maybe a class you're hoping to get into. If you'd like to give anybody any, uh, any special flowers here, go ahead and then you can always point them back to the show and see if it, see if it bumps your grade a little bit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Willie, who you got, man? Is there any, any special teacher or, or somebody that's really made an impact on you you want to give some love to? Um, we have, I have the, uh, this new, uh, she's like my guided, like, study hall session leader, uh, Janae. She's pretty cool. Uh, she just, she just, uh, came to Chapel Hill and, uh, she's a great, you know, great, great person. And I'm glad to, you know, be in her group. Russell. Um, first, I want to give a shout out to Greg Beatty, academic advisor. Um, he's been awesome. Uh, and also, I, I hate to go back to high school, but um, Coach Tuma, my lacrosse coach in high school, he was also my econ teacher. And 
um, kind of was the first person who really got me interested in business and sort of led me down this path. So really appreciate him. Never would have pegged you as a lax bro. Love it. And I love the fact <laughs> you're willing to love the fact you're willing to dip into high school too. Cause, cause they have an effect on you guys as well on helping you get down the path you want. Jacoby. Um, for me, I definitely say, I mean, everyone on this call knows Kat. Um, and Kat she is the absolute best. Um, she works with not only uh, the defensive line, but the receivers. She will work with anybody on the team, even if those guys aren't assigned to her. Um, but I feel like she she makes an unbelievable sacrifice to ensure that all of us are, are maintaining and on a high level um, academically and that everything is, is squared away on that end. So um, definitely a big, a huge shout out to her. Um, and then I'll probably say a professor um, during my time at UNC, probably uh, Professor Matt Andrews, who wrestled mission. Um, he's a great guy. He not only wanted to get to know me um, as a football player, but also as a person as well. Um, when I, once I went out to this class last fall, so he's another great guy that I met um, along this academic journey. And I'm sure I'll kind of keep a relationship with him um, throughout my years. And who was the first person you mentioned? I'll make sure she gets accredited properly. Uh, yeah, Katarina uh, Zambrano. Okay. So, but Katarina name is Zambrano. Katarina. Yeah, All everybody right. got that. All right. Elijah, who who do you got that you wanna you wanna maybe uh, give some props to? Yeah, definitely give Kat a shout out. She's really the best academic advisor anyone can ask for. She's always open arms, willing to help us with that whatever we got going on. Even if you need just someone to talk to about life, she's always there. Someone to help you uh, academically, she's always there. And then uh, I've got a couple of professors actually in the business school, like Russ Mitchell and Jim. Uh, Russ mentioned Jim Kitchens. He's, he's a great professor. Really enjoyed taking his class. Uh, yeah, guy went to space, man. Like, what, yeah, what, yeah what, can, how do you top that? Yeah, literally. And then uh, Professor Hone, Greg Hone, he's a, a business professor with a business improvisation. And uh, Russ was in my class for that. And he can attest to uh, Professor Hone. He's a great professor. And then uh, Professor Clevens, she helped me uh, create my own guided study this past summer. She helped me do my own academic study. And I was studying uh, reparations for Black Americans in the United States, and she designed a whole course and gave me case studies and allowed me to be able to do my actual uh, academic journal on it. So shout out to her. And then uh, I talked about the personal branding class, Professor Schlobaum. She's awesome as well and really appreciate her for all the things that she does to create an inclusive environment in our class. I'm glad you guys are willing to name those folks because obviously it takes a special person to be able to give up themselves to help you guys reach your academic goals, but also, you know, to care as much about you guys, like, like you said, they do. It's it, again, it's, it takes a special human being with, with a special set of skills to be able to do that. Um, you know, for people that, that are going to rotate in and out every semester. So uh, I'm glad you guys are were willing to kind of lift them up and, and hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll get a little, uh, a little love or a little pat on the back or something. Um, a couple more questions before we get out of here. And we're talking with, with some guys via Heels for Life, uh, just talking about academics. Academics. These four guys have, have shown themselves to be um, absolute powerhouses in the classroom, not just on the football field. And, and we wanted to kind of look at things in a different light and let people realize that, you know, through Heels for Life, not only are, are these guys, you know, are, is it now about football players getting paid, but it's about these guys being true student athletes and being real uh, academic achievers and, and really recognizing that that heels for life and NIL are not just supporting you know guys that are putting up TDs. Like of course they do support that, but they're also supporting guys that are busting their ass in the classroom. And I think it's important for our listeners and viewers around the the UNC football community to understand that. Um, so we appreciate these four gentlemen joining us today. Uh, another question before we get out of here: uh, What's something you'd like our listeners or viewers to know about you that they may not know from like an academic perspective? Right? I think all of you, you know. Uh, Jacoby might want to tell us what his favorite uh, his favorite pa pass rush move is, or or maybe <laughs> Russell wants to, maybe wants to Russell wants to dip into you know what his favorite route is, but like I, I'd love for you guys just to share what's something academically that that you'd love for everybody that's going to hear and see this. What you'd like them to know about you, Willie? I'll come to you first. Uh, I like to read. That's that's one of my favorite things to do is read. You know, um, I've one of my books that I'm reading right now is a. Uh, can't hurt me by David Goggins. Just a pretty good book. I see. Yeah, everybody always wants to clown Lyman, and here, here Willie is the first one dropping, dropping the titles of books that you know some people are going to hear. So, oh man, I got to go check that out. 
Um, we'll get you. We'll get you started on an official, uh, official Willie Lampkin Road Graders uh, approved list of reading. Uh, we'll start publishing <laughs> that very soon. It'll, it'll it'll overtake Oprah's bestseller list in, in no time. Um, Russell, what's what's something you wish people knew about you uh, academically that 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 maybe they don't know? Um, I'm also interested in history. I'm planning on double majoring. Um, like Jacoby was talking about, those Matt Andrews classes kind of uh, sold me on on adding the history major. Um, just some some really interesting lectures and um, just just a lot a lot of interesting content that I probably would have otherwise never known about if it weren't for some of those classes. Any specific era in history or any specific geographic locale that that really kind of resonates with you? Um, I can't say so. I mean, most of the most of the classes I've taken have been American history, um, but you know, interested in kind of expanding into into other areas and times. Love that, uh, Jacoby. What's what's something you wish folks knew about you academically that they, they may not be aware of? Um, academically, I'd probably say one of my biggest achievements um, throughout my college career was probably um, being named uh, as a academic All Big Ten. Um, that was kind of a big accomplishment for me. Um, and you know, I've kind of made it to a Rose Bowl. I have a Rose Bowl ring and Big Ten championship and all these things. But that was probably one of my my biggest accomplishments uh, off the field and academically. I'm um, another thing that I'm kind of proud of and, and I take pride in is kind of volunteer doing volunteer and, and service work in the community. Um, if I'm not on the field or, or in a classroom, that's another thing that I'm doing as well. Um, just because, like I said, um, that's, that's one thing that I've always been taught to get back to those uh, that, that are less fortunate, um, and those who don't have the resources that I have. So um, I love to use my platform um, and just to, to do that and do good work whenever I can. So that's another thing that I want people to know about me. Love that. And I, I also, you know, you're, you're showing off your your intellect by sliding that humble brag about your Big Ten championship <laughs> and your Rose Bowl and intertwining it into an answer about academics. That's a, that's a smart man. I see you working. I love that. Um, Elijah, last last one. I'll, I'll let you answer the same question. Is there something you wish folks knew about you academically that, that maybe they don't know? Uh, yeah, I was honored to – be uh, a five. <clears throat> it's my bet. <clears throat> I was honored you're to like, be. Get all choked up about it, aren't you? It's it's a big yeah. deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was honored to be a finalist for the Arthur Ashe Sports Scholar of the Year Award. Wow! Uh, of like almost two thousand, I think nominees and a bunch of finalists. I was awarded like a top five finalist. So I was honored to be able to be a part of the amazing group of student athletes that were uh, awarded that same thing. And uh, another thing, I I really like to write. That's something. I love business and everything, but I feel like a lot of my true passions really started when I was younger. Just loved to write, loved to write stories, uh, songs, poems. So that's something that I really, really enjoy to this day. Yeah, and and I appreciate you guys all opening up about that. I think that's um, that it's really cool when you kind of share with folks, you know, who I am, the guy, who I am, the person, uh, outside of you know these other things that you kind of often get uh, pigeonholed into. All right. Last question, then I might kind of open it up for some uh, for some quick hitters and have some fun before we get out of here. Uh, one of the big things I think about about NIL is is people have this conception. You know, I think folks are now starting to embrace it and realizing that you know players do deserve to to be able to profit off of their their talents and their abilities. But I want to ask you guys individually, personally, what is NIL meant to you? Uh, you know, whether it be yourself or what it's done to other athletes you know i know heels for life has supported tally craft uh in, in his journey through fighting cancer and you know it's everybody knows how how nil is trying to help tez walker as he works to fight this completely unjust decision by the ncaa so i want to ask each one of you guys how do you feel like uh nil is impacting whether it's you personally uh some guys on the team or maybe just your overall thoughts that you'd like to to share with people that might be uh watching or listening to this elijah yeah, uh, I kind of the first thing that comes to mind is this past summer, I was able to go back to my high school and run a, a high school football camp and be able to have people from all different high schools around uh, the Roswell area in Georgia be to come out. And I was able to, you know, teach some different skills that I've learned while I've been in college, kind of put them through some workouts some drills that we do even here at UNC. So having the opportunity to be able to use NIL and our platform to be able to make a difference and even be able to mentor and educate other guys that are going to be in the same position as us going forward and 
things that I wish that I was able to hear and learn when I was in high school, be able to use our platform and NIL to give back to a lot of different communities and especially really, really important and special for me to go back to my high school to do that. So I feel like just things like that just opens up a huge amount of doors just for guys to do similar things and, you know, impact their communities, be able to give back. And I feel like it's really important to be able to use our voice and use NIL for good and be able to give back to, uh, you know, the things that we want to be able to give back to. Yeah, you're actually able to turn, you know, your own success already uh, into some passion projects and some things that have meaningful uh, impacts in the community and, and not just, you know, to other players, but to other kids, like, you know, things that they might be able to latch on to uh, in their lives. Mr. Cowan. I think for me, um, first of all, NIL was definitely a blessing to so many uh, student athletes all across the country. And I, I think when I think of NIL, I think about all the, the phenomenal players and people that have came before us that didn't have an opportunity like we do now um, in this new world of NIL. And uh, I say new because it is a new, it's a new thing and people are still trying to uh, learn about NIL and actually what it entails. Uh, but I think it, it gives us a great opportunity, you know, to, to just benefit from our name, image, image and likeness. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just a blessing because um, not only do you get to provide for yourself, um, but for your family as well, you have guys um, that don't come from much. Um, and, and, and really when you, when you have an opportunity to, you know, profit off of things um, of, of that nature, um, it, it, it's just, it, it's definitely a great thing, so. Good perspective, Willie. Um, going back to what uh, Kobe said, you know, it's a blessing, you know, to be able to profit off your name and, you know, to help yourself and help your family. Um, and going with, to what Elijah said, you know, helping kids, you know, who doesn't have, who don't have much, you know, being able to mentor those kids, be able to give back to your community, be able to, you know, run those football camps. You know, that's a blessing, you know, for me, for kids, you know, who, who, who never had the opportunity to do that. Uh, and, and Mr. Tabor, uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you wrap that one. Yeah, I think just um, to me, it's really kind of um, exposed just kind of the quality of guys we have in the locker room. Um, I've been really impressed by just like it hasn't been a topic of conversation. You know, I think a lot of people were um, kind of reluctant about it in the beginning just because you're like kind of imagining it might create some some weird dynamics among the team. But um, it's just not something that really comes up and um just really appreciate how humble everyone's been, um, how they're really using it to help out the community, and um, especially guys like um, Tylee and, uh, and Tez, just two guys that have been through so much hardship. And to be able to see them, to um, see them sort of, um, you know, make, make some money and um, be able to uh, sort of profit off of, you know, the, the image they've set and, and the uh, uh, just sort of how much they've inspired all of us um, has been awesome. All right, before we get out of here, I'm going to play some short answer, and I'm just going to let you guys popcorn your answers out here. I'm not going to call on anybody. I just want you guys to shout out your answers, and if, if you have more than one, that's fine. Uh, but I want to have a little bit of fun before we wrap. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. First question, favorite place to study on campus? Lottermilk. Lottermilk. <laughs> I'd probably say the facility um, in the players' lounge that we have, the new players' lounge. Yeah, players' lounge, uh, recording yeah, studio, course. like producing area. Ah, nice. Uh, what's the subject that you hate the most? Spanish. Econ. <laughs> Econ, for sure. Econ. Yeah. yeah. Science. <laughs> does, does Gardner Hall still smell like barf? Gardner, <laughs> Gardner Hall used to have a real vomit smell to it. And I'm just curious, is, is, is it still smell that way? Uh, I wouldn't say barf, but I would say it kind of it smells like just an old place. That, it's dank, right? Like yeah. it's... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, hardest class, hardest class you've had. Uh, I'd say Econ four ten. I, I bet Elijah would probably second that. Yeah, Econ four ten. <laughs> For me, I'd probably say Portuguese, just because I've always, um, if I've been in a language class, it's always been Spanish, even from high school. So I think uh, having to switch from Spanish and, and kind of switch to an entirely new language in Portuguese, I think that was pretty uh, challenging. But um, so that's probably what I was thinking. Will, you got a, you got a, a hardest class you want to shout out? Spanish. Uh, Spanish is like really hard for me. 
<laughs> Man. Um, all right. Trivia night. Which one of you guys would win out of Trivia Night? If you, if you had your own squad, you're playing Trivia Night at, at the at the local spot, or, or maybe you're doing Jeopardy, which one of you guys is going to win? I'm going to give it a Russ. I'm going to give it to Elijah. Nah, I'm give it to Elijah. Elijah. <laughs> All right. Who else is who else on that's not on this call would you would you want on your uh, – and I'll, I will go on each one of you here. Give me one player that's not on this call, that's not on this this podcast, that you would love to have on your Trivia or your Jeopardy team. Russell. Um, I'm going with, with Jake Harkerode. He's All he's right. like Rain Man. I've I've actually played <laughs> trivia with him before, and there was a roller coaster uh, round, and the guy literally knows more about roller coasters than <laughs> I think anyone in the world. He can name like the amount of axles and, and rotations on all of them. It, it's it's insane. So he's a weapon for sure. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna so and after after one of your teammates says somebody's name, you can't use them anymore. So Elijah, who are you taking? It can't be Harkerode. I'm going with Christopher Holiday, smartest man, and he's he's crazy. He's an academic weapon, weapon for sure. All right, Willie. Um, I'll, I'll say Kamarius. I know he'll argue you to death. <laughs> Kamari, so man might have a career in law ahead of him. Yeah, he might have to. All right, Jacoby, who who are you taking on on your trivia team? If you got one person in the locker room, you can take. Uh, for me, I'll probably say uh, say it, Gray, um, just because. Like he's another one of those guys that he he will not stop until until he gets his point across, um, and, and you're definitely gonna feel where he's coming from because um, he's real passionate about anything that he puts his mind to. So definitely said. Uh, all right, and last thing, and this is a little bit of a little bit of a freebie answer. One of the things you know they always say you can't study on an empty stomach. What's the one thing you're eating when you're you're locked down in either a group session or you've got a you got a cram for an exam or something else? What's the one food that you want with you when you when you're getting that last little bit of studying in, Elijah? Uh, I'll probably say like, like a slim jim. Really? <laughs> like a slim jim and like a protein shake. That's like one of my go-to snacks. All right, uh, Russell. Um, nothing really comes to mind, but I say a cup of coffee usually kind of got to keep me going through the day. All right, Jacoby. Um, big on fruit, always been a big um, fruit lover. So some type of fruit, uh, whether that be an apple or banana, um, some of that of, of the sorts. So. All right. Does it have to be something like that that you you know you can sit there and bite out of, or you need it cut up into into pieces so you can just kind of shovel while you're reading or studying? Um, I think the convenient option is having something that you can bite out of, but mm -hmm. if not, um, a fruit cup it can always do. So um, either or. All right, Willie, your last one, man. What do you got? I say some Chick Fil A. <laughs> that, that's the offensive lineman talking right there. I love it. <laughs> what are you getting from What are you getting from Chick Fil A? You get a big a big nugget tray, or do you want like an actual order with with some fries and sides and stuff? I say uh, get the the 12, 12 nuggets um, and spicy chicken sandwich. It's a large fry. I see, my my man's got some protein and some carbs in there for him, so he can he can get through <laughs> those those late night study sessions. Uh, gentlemen, this has been an incredible, uh, incredible discussion. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us here on InsideCarolina.com. Uh, hopefully, you guys can get some some plaudits for you know for all the the hard work that you've done in the classroom, and and hopefully you're starting to get some recognition for for just how much you've stepped up to the plate academically as well as what you've been able to put in on the football field. But uh, we appreciate the time, appreciate what you guys have done, especially on a bye week. You know, you, this is one of the few times where you have a little bit less going on. But uh, thankful for you. Wishing nothing but the best the rest of the way. And, you know, if, if I ever uh, if I ever have find myself with a, an extra seat beside me in a, a trivia game going on at a local water and hole, I'll, I'll give one of you guys a call. Sound good? Sounds good. All good. right. Well, for Russell Tabor, Elijah Green, Willie Lampkin, and Jacoby Cowan, uh, this has been the Study Lounge version of the Players Lounge brought to you by Heels for Life on InsideCarolina.com. Uh, if you have not checked out Heels for Life, please do so. That is the collective that's driving NIL for the UNC football team. It's heelsforlife.org. Find out how you can be a contributor, how you can help directly to guys that not just football players, that are real top-notch students like the guys we've been talking to for the last hour or so. Uh, make sure you can do that. You can pledge any amount you want to. You can be a monthly sustainer. All of those things matter because it helps UNC compete with the other NILs and the other teams that are in the, in the NCAA. Uh, and if you have not yet become a premium subscriber to Inside Carolina, go ahead and do that too. 
Either way, you'll enhance your life by doing both those things. But until next time, thanks for being here. Shout out to Heels for Life. Uh, shout out to Graham Boone. I am Joey Powell. We'll talk to you next time on InsideCarolina.com.